Hello class and welcome to my last discussion for this course on uh, George Morrison's The Outrageous Idea of Christian Scholarship. Before I get started, I want to say according to course guidelines, historians must be honest and objective in their research and must be dedicated to a reasoned investigative reconstruction of primary sources. So for this week, we were to uh, basically go back on all the readings we did over the last seven weeks for George Marston's um, Outrageous Ideas of Christian Scholarship and discuss his top ideas and topics in the book. Um, one of the things I found throughout this whole entire, uh, throughout the whole reading of, of his text is this idea that Christian religion or religion in general um, is not really... Um, addressed in the mainstream academic field. Uh, obviously, we know there is, you know, the idea of the separation between church and state, um, and that's why a lot of religion is not taught in um, mainstream academia, especially in elementary, middle, and high school classes. Um, but also in college classes, a lot of institutions that are not focused as a religious institution or a Christian institution, they don't focus on this idea of religion um, and they don't really speak of it. A big thing that a lot of a lot of the topics that we discussed was that this um, this idea of professors not really leaning into their own ideas of their religion, whether Christian or other beliefs, um, and the fact that it's kind of frowned upon if they do address their own faith in this um, academic setting. So um, in his intro, he said uh, for early on, actually in the, I believe the overview of the intro, uh, he said Christian perspectives and the perspectives of other religious groups be accepted as legitimate in the mainstream academy. So really focusing on this idea that while the school or the, acad or the institution or whatever it may be, um, not having a focused idea of beliefs or faith or religion, that the it should still be accepted for the professors, for the students to be able to express their own ideas and their own religious beliefs. Um, one of my favorite parts of, re of the reading, and I think one of the most popular um, arguments of why religion and uh, religion is separated from academic academics is this whole idea of scientific versus religion. Um, I really enjoyed that chapter being that I think it's, it's one of the bigger arguments of why they don't have this religious idea in um, academia. So the fact that, you know, this idea of proof, there's no proof that we can show that of, of the religious background of Christianity, of, of God, there's no solid proof that, that there's any existence of it. So how can we as academics um, really ha really show that Christianity and, and religious beliefs are real and um, important to academia if we don't have any proof to follow that up. Um, so out of all the reading, I mean, out of all the seven chapters that we did read for this, that is like one of my favorite parts of it is really have this argument of science versus religion. Um, in, his, in chapter two, when he does speak of it, in the conclusion of it, he said that, you know, that there's some indignant reactions because of this idea of the unscientific often, or the unscientific, or, or we would offend somebody, you know, if someone isn't Christian and we're teaching a Christian um, idea or ideology, how is that going to affect them or how is it going to offend them in that sense? Um, and then it also violates the separation of church and state, which we have here in America. So out of all the information we got from George Morrison, um, I really in, enjoyed that section most. Um, and I think that that shows the argument of why Christian scholarship is so hard to maintain in a mainstream academic field or institution because of this idea that we just need proof. And sometimes proof is not allowed or accepted. Uh, this proof is not accepted because it's a belief versus showing that there really is proof. So thank you. I hope you enjoyed.